This is going to be your guide for using Poltegeist in Pokemon Sword and Shield. So, first thing I want to talk about with this Pokemon are the stats, because Poltegeist has a 134 on the special attack. That is powerful. It is one of the highest special attacks in the entire Galar decks. So we have Unreleased Legendaries, Chandler, Vikavolt, Kursala, Hatterene, Drampa, and then Poltegeist with the 6th highest special attack, more than Gengar, more than Espeon, Glaceon, so on and so forth. And then the stats kind of get weird. Almost no hit points, no defense, so very physically frail. 114 special defense. So we just eat special hits more than we should, and then 70 on the speed, but some of this stuff also doesn't really matter, because Poltegeist appears to have a shell made of porcelain, and if we were to smash that shell, in theory, we would get faster and hit harder. If that's a possibility, then that's what Poltegeist is going to want to do. So more on that later. We also have weak armor. So if it gets hit, that armor gets cracked, lowers defense, but then speed gets boosted even more. It's not hard to make Poltegeist fast, and for signatures, we have Tea Time as a signature move. All active Pokemon consume held berries. The competitive viability on this move is very niche and interesting and situational, but thematically, Game Freak gets the A+. So now let's go into the moveset. Of course, it's going to be Shell Smash. That is what everyone knows Poltegeist for. So what I'm thinking is, we go Modest Nature, we max out that speed, we Shell Smash, and we just become one of the fastest, most untouchable Pokemon in the game. Highest special attack, actually just highest offensive Shell Smash Pokemon in the game as well. So what we can do, we look up Shell Smash, we go here, and then special attack, boom. Poltegeist is the highest special attack on Shell Smash by far, and then with attack, yeah, uh, 105 on the Crustle, 105 on Barbarical. Barbarical does get the Tough Claws, but that doesn't apply to every move. Like, it doesn't get Rock Stab Tough Claws. I love using Barbarical on Shell Smash. It's won me many games back in, like, Generation 6 and 7, but, you know, this is this is what we got now. So, yeah, uh, Poltegeist just brings the most raw stats in a Shell Smash than any other Pokemon we've seen before. Has good speed, it just keeps multiplying, and if you get hit by a physical attack, it doesn't matter because we Focus Sash. So, take a hit, any hit, Shell Smash, that means we're going to be losing defense, gaining stats right here. Like, this is what makes Shell Smash so scary. So, lowers defense, special defense by one, and then attack, special attack, and speed by two, and then weak armor, further defense drop, further speed gain, so plus four speed if we get hit by a physical attack. And we're safe because of Focus Sash, that is insane. Stab plus two Shadow Ball on a 134 special attack. Sword Power, this is really interesting because Sword Power is not net. That if it was about net gain and stuff, it really wouldn't be that great. However, we have plus two attack, special attack, and speed, so stored power gets 140 base power off that, and potentially more if we have the weak armor activating. That's a lot, and then Giga Drain for coverage, because that's kind of cool. I don't think healing is going to matter unless you, like, one-shot a water Pokemon and they bring in a special attacker, and even at minus one, they can't deal with the 114 special defense or something. I don't know, it kind of gets weird, but this is mostly here for the coverage, and if you hit super effective damage, and you can stack more damage than the stored power with Shadow Ball, then go for it. Also, stored power is something they have taken into consideration, because with Shadow Ball, 80 stab makes it... 120. Stored power is just raw damage. It's just more damage, especially with the weak armor. So, big brain it out, throw down the highest damage that you have with the Poltegeist, and that's that's like it. You know, you can maybe run a couple of other attack options. So let's go and check out Poltegeist. So it's a Ghost-type Pokemon. This is pretty good. Like, if you're going to have a Pokemon and it has two weaknesses, just take it. You're going to be fine. Normal, fighting immunity, poison, bug resistance, and then, like, all kinds of weird moves, but they all make sense. Aromatic Mist, and we're just like, just smell that tea brewing and feel happy on the inside. It doesn't really do too much competitively, but it makes a lot of sense on the Pokemon. Withdraw, just hides in its little teapot, and everything's all nice. Strength Sap, Ghost-type Pokemon, Tea Time. So yeah, we got some fun stuff, but as for other moves, Sucker Punch, it's cool to have the priority, and some people can run it. I just think that, you know, if you're in that situation, it means you're about to get picked off by a priority move. That's really it. The only thing that stops Poltegeist once it gets going is priority. However, priority is pretty common. Another Sucker Punch, 
unless you get into weird shell smash mind games and like you try to pee pee stall out the sucker punch while shell smashing and then you get that excellent prediction and you just KO them, that could happen. But then Shadow Sneak, that's going to take you out. Ice Shard, that's going to take you out. Fortunately, you don't have to worry about Quick Attack unless like Pixelate boosted or something by a Sylveon. But you are going to like find a Mimic you and then Mimic you just ruins your day. So the most that a Sucker Punch is going to get for you is that you break Mimic you's disguise before Mimic you gets to hit you with like a Shadow Sneak and KO you. When you're just sitting at that one hit points, it's going to be just a little rough. And then we have Dark Pulse, but Dark Pulse doesn't matter because we have Stored Power. And then we just have like a lot of other weird stuff that might work in doubles or some kind of like synergistic setup or a non Shell Smash Sweeper. For the Poltegeist, as for the damage, here's what we got. So, Shadow Ball at plus two against a bulky Pokemon like Silvalli is almost a one-hit KO, which is kind of odd. So, even with the Modest Nature, even with the 134 Special Attack at plus two, we aren't one-shotting everything. So, Poltegeist isn't super unstoppably scary in that regard, but then Stored Power comes into play, and like I said, that's actually where the damage is. So, we get a plus two, and then we get a plus two, and now, Stored Power finds a KO, so think before you use your attacks. The damage difference is very, and gets very significant, and now, this is where a one-hit KO City comes into play. A uh, Dark-type Pokemon can find that resist, and maybe just wall you out anyways. So yeah, Shadow Ball gets resisted, Stored Power's immune, Giga Drain isn't really that much of an option. Now, it does take a bulky Dark-type Pokemon, but if they have that, then yeah, because as we can see right here, no random, like, Dazzling Gleam, splash, Splashed In, Draining Kiss, nothing like that. Aromatic Mist is status move. So, you can get, you can have uh, Poltegeist get stopped out. And we're looking at this damage, it also shows that just in average sweeping Pokemon, it's like, alright, cool, you lose a Pokemon. Like, Poltegeist is going to get a KO, but then the response is, you Dynamax, and then you just wipe it out by surviving the hit. But then Poltegeist can Dynamax, and things, you know, get alright. Like a max move, still not going to be finding KOs, and the stored power actually loses damage because it doesn't count as stored power anymore. It's just a 20 base power move, then becoming the um, Mind Storm that isn't as powerful. So keep that in mind when you go for those moves. But yeah, plus two Shadow Ball might not be enough to just one-shot another Dynamax Pokemon, and then that's the response into Poltegeist. So in 3v3, it, it's not like this Pokemon, you know, leads gets a Shell Smash, and then 3-0 sweeps. That's what I like about Dynamax. It halts a lot of that wacky sweeping that we saw in Generation 6 and 7. Then Generation 6 and 7, if Poltegeist existed, it would be one of the best Pokemon ever. But there's a lot of things that can stop it now with like the mechanics and just the common threats that we see in Pokemon Sword and Shield. So you can do this. You can have a lot of fun. It can clean up pretty hard in 6v6, and if you can force like an opponent to burn a Dynamax, Pull the Ice comes in as a very good response to that, but you still have to worry about priority and some other weird things that can just kind of happen. Um, as for setup Pull guys, I was trying to think about because like, well, we have this 114 special defense, and we have like a lot of cool moves, so tank Pull guys could be a possibility because we also have the Nasty Plot. So, there. You know, we, we threw out the Nasty Plot, and then we have Giga Drain for sustain, we have Strength Sap for sustain, and it's still a plus two, even Uninvested Shadow Ball is going to be comparable to this amount of damage. So, dial that back, take off the max move. That's still one-shots Pokemon in neutral. Let's see what this does to Cinderace, because I know Cinderace is frail. Yep, that's all you need. You just need that plus, and you're good to go. So, you can tank a hit from Cinderace, Strength Sap, get all of your health back, take a weaker hit, Shadow Ball, blow it up, rinse, repeat. Pulte guys does some fun stuff like that once you get that nasty plot going. So yeah, even that's like, um, take the hit, Strength Sap, nasty plot, Strength Sap, maybe Strength Sap again depending on where the damage is going, and then things happen and it gets weird, but that's alright. Max hit points defense because we need to run it that way. I like the idea of Moringa Berry because this doesn't have any way of gaining special defense, so a plus one special defense on Max hit points, 114 base. Yeah, that's really nice. That's going to make you very tanky, and then you just kind of match things, and you hit super effectives while healing, or you just have big shadow balls, and curse body is pretty cool. They lose their stab option against you, then you're going to be even better off, or could maybe do some weak armor weirdness. Now, the problem is we start getting into, like, not invested, plus two weak armor 
things kind of happening, it gets weird. Because we, like, we, we, we need to give up EVs if we want to make sure we're outspeeding everything. But to get to that point, that means we need to make sure we survive the physical hit. Weak armor activates. We lower our defense. Strength sap becomes the option. I don't know. Like, it's cool to outspeed an opponent with strength sap or just have big damage on them. But I don't think the weak armor is something to play around with. Except in, like, very niche and rare situations. So, there's that. And then I was also kind of looking into a doubles on the Poltegeist. So, here's a couple of other things that you need to know. At level 50, you need 132 EV investment to then outspeed Dragapult. Now, this is where you take that physical hit. Keyberry can activate. That offsets your weak armor. And then, in doubles, we're looking at potential split damage off of, like, Earthquake or Rock Slide and stuff. Maybe lack of focus from the opponent's sweeping Pokemon. And then this gives you a lot more opportunities where it's like you Strength Sap. Maybe you're not fast that turn. They hit you, Weak Armor activates. That might buff you into a different speed tier over the other opponent Pokemon. And then you can hit them with a Will-O-Wisp. I don't know, it's weird. But I like the idea of doubles Poltegeist. Because you can just like hang around and be annoying. And you really can shut down physical attackers. So you're supportive for your sweeping Pokemon. As long as your sweeping Pokemon is putting in work, getting KOs, Poltegeist is just going to kind of like be there frustrating. It's like, oh, Strength Sap, Yoink away some power, Will-O-Wisp another Pokemon, using the Ally Switch to then swap around. Maybe you could do that. You could bait out one of those physical hits. Ally Switch, eat the physical hit, Weak Armor activates, Keyberry puts you back at plus zero. You then Strength Sap, you get all of your health back. They're at minus, so now you get to survive a little better. And you can throw down that Will-O-Wisp. And this is just kind of like another move slot because once again we have weird stuff so what does Poltegeist want to do with that weird stuff could tea time like this is what i mean for like the niche weird usage on tea time that if you find an opportunity to use it and you force an opponent to consume a citrus berry a confusion berry some kind of useful berry that they want to play around with if they force that early then that means they don't get the full benefit of that berry you know like a full health rotom eating a berry hey that's going to be pretty nice. Or it's not going to like screw you over when you're not expecting it. And then this means you can maybe force a Patea Berry, Salak Berry, some kind of other berry for your ally, and maybe even your own Key Berry. So that, that could also kind of be a way that you preempt it, you know? You use Tea Time, that's going to just be like Key Berry against a special attacker. I don't know, like yeah, let's see, Key Berry and Weak Armor activate at the same time, so I don't think Tea Time is going to do much for that, for you in that situation. So I think it's more going to be about hoping the opponent has a berry and then maybe utilizing an allied berry. If not, you don't need tea time. Like I said, it's, it's niche. You could have gone for some fun. Astonish. You're going to be faster than pretty much any Pokemon, so Astonish, 30% chance to flinch. Just be annoying. Or Memento. So as long as your ally, like, KOs an opponent's Pokemon, you put down a Will-O-Wisp on the other Pokemon, and then you Memento the other other Pokemon, now it's like your, your sweeping Pokemon's fine. You did more than one Pokemon's worth of work, and the opponent has like a lot of useless Pokemon on the field, and it was a Poltegeist. So Poltegeist does a really strong one for one, and then it's like a 3v3 with an opponent that's burned and has half their offenses. That's kind of weird. And Aromatic Mist, Raise an Ally Special Defense. If you want to do it, you can. Aromatic Mist doesn't raise your Special Defense, which is kind of silly. And it's not like you could even run it in singles because it doesn't even work in singles. So it's like, yeah, just Aromatic Mist your Ally if you want to do some weird stuff. Kind of works. You're doing physical shutdown, then buffing your ally special defense. If that ally has sustain, they might be around for a while. And it's something that you can consider. And then that's when we get into like the weed, weird speed teary things like that. Um, some other things I want to talk about. Shell Smash. So, Cloyster is actually like the stronger-ish Shell Smash Pokemon. So, if we get rid of the max move, you know, it's like we still have insane damage on the stored power. But Icicle Spear, Jolly Nature, we have more speed on the Cloyster. We have more damage on our primary stab, and we KO the Pokemon that matter at plus two. Also, we break Focus Sash, we break Mimikyu Disguise, even though in theory, like, we wouldn't be good against Mimikyu because, like, priority and stuff. You know, weird breakdowns inside the game. Unless, like, you use a Dynamax Pokemon, set Psychic Terrain, bring in Cloyster. Same thing could happen with uh, Poltegeist. Psychic Terrain just kind of exists, and Poltegeist is going for a big sweep. That'd be pretty nice. But Cloyster breaks Sashes, breaks Disguise. It breaks a lot of things. And it also has more damage despite only having 95 attack because of the way the base power works. 
outside of stored power and stuff like that. So, weird matchups, weird things to mention. Uh, Cloyster also just, like, eats physical hits, even after minus one, even when she's setting up Shell Smash, even after Shell Smash, it just survives physical hits, and it doesn't always need to, like, worry about that Focus Sash or something, and sometimes you even see White Herb Cloyster, and if it's at half health, then it doesn't have to worry about dying to priority. So, these Cloisters get more scary in their reliability of the setup, and they're just bulkier, and they still have comparable damage or the same sweeping potential. So if you're, like, terrified of Poltegeist, if you've survived Cloyster, you can survive a Poltegeist. It's kinda, it kind of breaks down like that. I was looking into some other things, like, what about Poltegeist versus Snorlax? So depending on where we are, we have two shot against Snorlax. Well, not minus six. Whoops. We have uh, two shot against Snorlax or more. So I was like, yeah, what about, like, a really special defense bulky Pokemon? You know, this isn't full special defense Snorlax, but you really don't see full special defense Snorlax. So you can come in as like a response. So yeah, let's say Focus Sash, Shenanigans, you give up your Pokemon, response is Snorlax, Snorlax crunches Poltegeist, Poltegeist can't KO, but you've effectively lost your Snorlax as well. Like you can just stop Poltegeist as a threat. It just ends up happening that way, unless you get the Shadow Ball prediction. So that's another thing, like if you know the opponent is going to Shadow Ball for some reason, going to Snorlax, that's immune. Stored power survived, and now you only lost, like, most of a Snorlax, and Poltegeist didn't really get to take off. Weird stuff like that. And then, back to my Generation 7 comparison, like, you just lead Poltegeist, you one-shot an outspeed Tapu Koko, and then the game is over. It could have been that way, but it isn't, and Dynamax stops it, and that's why Poltegeist exists in Generation 8 and not Generation 7. And I think that's kind of all that there is to talk about, so yeah... Primary thing, this shuts down setup. Like, my team has struggled against Poltegeist because uh, Togekiss doesn't match against, like, Poltegeist setup into Dynamax as well, and then I get blown up. So, Poltegeist does well against Togekiss. Poltegeist does well against other Pokemon that are setting up. And then, you know, it can just do more damage and get damage out faster. And if you're not hurting it because you're stalling, Poltegeist breaks stall really well. So, there's some situations where it excels in, but against most teams, it doesn't work really well. Or, it do yeah, it doesn't work well against most teams. But if you've struggled against it, then... Good thing is just not that common. I don't know, like, it feels like the end of this video kind of started breaking down a bit. Because, like, yeah, now we're getting all to weird nuances of Pokemon. But overall, how you use Poltegeist. How I'd like to see me people maybe try Poltegeist. And then some weird doubles tech that could still be pretty strong. So if you guys enjoy the video, hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.